Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, we just want to welcome you to a church with no walls. And so we are here to be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the world because there are no walls, there are no separations. We are all one family under God. Yeah, so I'm Donna Schuler. This is Robert Schuler. For those of you that maybe haven't joined us before, we'll take a few minutes and, and greet you before we start the service. But um, we've been doing this a long time. You know, we came out of a, a very, very large church uh, 12 years ago now. Yeah. And, high production uh, volume. High, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is our budget value. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we were, you know, we uh, Robert pastored a huge church for many, many years. One of the big, at the time, the biggest church there was, the Christ Cathedral in the Hour of Power. And then we went online. Uh, as soon as we could go on Facebook Live, we did Facebook Live. But prior to that, we've been online for years now. And then what happened now, can you believe this? 14, 15, 16 weeks ago when the churches closed, we were just like, what? The churches can't close? This can't be. So Robert got on the phone. Right. You know, being being older, being uh, around for a longer, we know a lot of pastors, right, Robert? Specifically young pastors, because most yes. of the churches today are being pastored by guys in their 30s and 40s, and and even 50s is young compared to me. What can I say? Exactly. And, <laughs> so what did you do? You called all these pastors that we knew locally here in Orange County, California, and asked them. I told them. Yeah. I said, I didn't ask them. Yeah. I told them. I said, hey, you've got to do a drive-in church. Right. I told them how to do it, and I told them how simple it was and how great it is. Um, nothing. Nobody would do it. So uh, I should say nobody around here. We have people on the East Coast. Now, we're going back 16 weeks ago, so this is it's a little different today, but that's four months, 16 weeks. Yeah, we so here's a shout-out to Mark. He's on the yes. he's in Florida. Oh, no. Sand he's in Hills. Sand Hills, North yeah, or South church. Carolina. I can't remember which. Near, near uh, Raleigh. That's Near Raleigh and Charlotte. North Carolina. North Carolina. Thank you. Okay. And anyway, he's out there and he's climbing on top of a rooftop and speaking to a drive-in church there. And we're we're uh, we're beach buddies. He's are, on the east coast. I am on the west coast. Yeah. And uh, so we're gonna we, go see him soon. Yeah. But you know, so this is what happened. As we decided, I just want to go back to that a little bit before we start the service. We decided. Gosh, if nobody else is going to have a, a drive-in church, even though we don't and have a parking lot. And it's as easy as I said it is. Yeah, and we don't have a parking lot. We don't have a staff. Like, keep in mind, it's Robert and I. No staff, no sound equipment, no nothing. So we were like, well, I guess we'll do it if nobody else will. So we started in a parking lot uh, 13, 14 weeks ago. Yep. And... Um, that's where we are today. Hey, hey. I, you know, people love it so much. They're like, can so, so you keep you're, going? So if you're in, <laughs> if you're in the area and want to drive to Newport Dunes this morning, we'll be there at ten o'clock. So, so join us. We'd love to have you because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, because uh, we are here to come together and to pray. So let us pray, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this opportunity that we have. To be able to come together and join spiritually in this church of people around the world. And so we thank you, Lord, for, for, for what you're doing in our lives and in this nation and in this world this very moment. You are a God who, who cares for us, who loves us, who has our good in mind. And so we thank you, Lord, for the beautiful, positive things you're doing in our lives and in the world this very moment. So we pray, O oh Lord, that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. When you said, let us pray, it reminded me of having our... <laughs> we had our three-year-old and our six-year-old grandchildren overnight on Friday night, I think it was. Yeah, yeah Friday night. And you said they were saying uh, the six year old was knock knock jokes. Knock, knock jokes. So what did you say? You I said, do you, want, do you know what my favorite knock knock joke is? They go, what? I said, okay. Just before you, when you get ready to pray for dinner tonight, you go, I got a joke. What is it? Knock, knock. Who's there? Let us. Let us who? <laughs> You're really slow now. Let us who? Let us, let us pray. Yeah, so that when you just said let that us, prayer, let us pray. I just yeah. got a little chuckle on myself. That was just a couple days ago, Friday night. And so, uh, yeah. So, welcome everyone. And uh, 
So I guess that's it. We kind of did the warm up and anything else you want to say? Yes, about I want to talk about your oh. fearless pin. Yes, it doesn't show very well on the white today, but and it's always backwards because we have our cell phone, you know, camera turned back this way towards us, so it shows back. So everything is mirrored. But so you see mirror imaging. Yes, exactly. For for a suggested donation of twenty dollars, if you want to. Send $20 to the ministry. I will send you one of these pens. We personally put it, and it comes in, before we take it out and show you a little closer, it comes in a cute little bag. Makes a great gift. We've actually, I'm going to take it out so you can show, I'm going to show it to you against a black background. And again, it's backwards, but there's what it looks like. See, it's shiny. It's all rhinestones, and it's pretty, pretty yeah, and so it sparkles. It makes a great, um, it makes a great gift for your mom, your aunt, your cousins, um, I've given a lot away. I think we've given away about a hundred already. Have we really? Yeah, I think wow. So, so uh, anyway, if oh, you want I think one, we've given more than that away because we gave them away in, at the uh, drive-in church one Sunday. We did. That's right. So, we gave them to everybody. Yeah, so, so. Um, if you'd like one, just you can go on. What's the best way? Um, because you have to let us know. Maybe go to drschuler.org and then I believe there's a little pop-up window there. Or if you want to donate over to the left of the Facebook page. Uh, where it says notes, go into the notes section and click on there and you'll find very easily a way to donate and just put in the little um, message bar that you would like a pen, fearless pen. So, so we need your address if you want yes. us to mail it yes, to you. Yes, we need so an address. Got to get us your address somehow. But I will answer and you if you request one and I will type you a note on And it. one way to do that uh, is to write to us. Um, our address is 26... Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. Uh, that's 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And if you didn't get that written down, you can always come back and watch this after, um, you know, after we post it uh, right after right. we finish. So, exactly. so you'll always be able to get information. So um, anyway, we've got a, a one of my favorite scriptures. I've got so many favorite scriptures. I'm going through my favorite scriptures. It's a pretty good book. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> book. So yeah, the, yeah, there should be some. Yeah, <laughs> there should be a, a, a lot of favorites in there. Exactly. And uh, so today you have me reading uh, Jeremiah 29. Um, most people are familiar with uh, Jeremiah 29:11. That's what I when you told me the scripture exactly. this morning, I recited that to you, and you said, "Well, wait till you read it uh, the the prior verses." So it's Jeremiah 29, four through 14. So hear this from uh, the Bible. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number, excuse me, increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for peace because if it prospers, you will too prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Hmm. Um, let's have a, a prayer before uh, we go on with the service. Heavenly Father, thank you that... Um, this is one of your promises, that even though sometimes we may feel in exile, uh, maybe we feel in exile in our own families, in our own communities, maybe we're exiled from friends, 
Um, there's people that are still in lockdown in their homes and they're lonely. Lord, you have a plan and your plan will be good because you plan on prospering us and giving us peace and showing us love and you never want to harm us, God. So we thank you. We thank you that we have the faith to hold on to hope and to know that all things work together because you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, anyway, uh, this is a great day to be alive, to realize that God is with us, and uh, to be able to worship Him. And, and so, if you want to wish to make a donation to this ministry, that's how we are able to do what we do. Uh, we work on a very small budget. <laughs> very told you we don't have any employees. It's we, me and I. Yeah. <laughs> we, so, so you know, our, our production value may not be as good as other programs, but I guarantee we don't have the budget of other programs. And, uh, for instance, when I was on the Hour of Power, just our airtime budget was was $18 million annually. Just wow. to, and, and now our, our airtime budget on Facebook is, what, a few pennies in comparison. But uh, anyway, it's it's a pleasure to be able to be here with you and to be able to share the good news of Jesus. It is. So Always. thank you, Donna, for sharing the yes. scripture. So if the they prayer. want to give, uh, what yes. should they do? So, <laughs> yeah, there's a couple ways to give. You can Venmo us. If you like Venmo, you can go to Robert Schuler Ministries and you can Venmo. Uh, there you can you can go to the notes section on Facebook. And we have a... Uh, uh, click on there. It's the first thing that comes up. And a uh, giving box. Right? There's a little giving box. And you click the giving box and you follow the prompts. And uh, so those are the, that's the two best ways. You can always mail a check. Again, our address is 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. So let me, let me share with you a few things about this message today. And uh, I'm going to excuse myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Donna. And, and if you wish to make a contribution today of, of $20 or more, we want to say thank you by sending you one of our pins, a fearless pin. And uh, so we, we look forward to doing that. But um, hey, our, our text today is one of my favorite verses. It's Jeremiah 29 11. And Jeremiah 29 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Those, those are, that's the, the verse that I, I learned as a young man that I've carried with me throughout my life, that I've preached on numerous times, but I've never preached on the entire passage of 4 through 14 before. And that's what I'm kind of excited about because it is so relevant to where we are today. First of all, let me give an introduction to this by telling that the prophet Jeremiah, uh, his prophecies, is known as one of the major prophets, not because he was better than the other prophets, but because he has more content than the other prophets. Uh, he is recognized uh, in, in, in Hebrew circles, and he's recognized in... in uh, Islamic circles as a great prophet. So he is, he is a prophet that has been recognized throughout history. His prophecies took place 600 years before Jesus was born. And what he's talking about is a historical event which took place 597 BC, before Christ. So what happened in 597 before Christ? On that year, that year, the temple which Solomon built, the one that we read about, the one that was that David wanted to build but wasn't allowed to build, this temple which housed the, the, the Holy of Holy and inside the Holy of Holy, the Ark of the Covenant and the tablets that Moses carried down from Mount Sinai, they were all in Solomon's temple. And in 597, almost exactly, basically 600 years before Jesus was born, the Babylonian Empire came in and destroyed the temple, destroyed the walls, took all of the Israelites as slaves, 
and marched them from Jerusalem 700 miles to Babylon, to the capital, which is in center, the center of Iraq. It was a, it was a trail of tears <laughs> as they marched all of these slaves into captivity. And they, and, and there they resided for the next 70 years. So we think we have it bad because we're confined within our homes. We think it's bad because our great-grandparents were slaves. Or our grandparents might be slaves. We're, we're upset because we're going through difficult, tribulous times. But we are not shackled and taken on a trail of tears where God only knows how many people died because they did it. Took, it was 225 hours. That was weeks of marching through the deserts and the, and the and they didn't have manna falling from the sky when they were in the wilderness. They didn't have water gushing through rocks like like Moses did. That's a trail of tears from Jerusalem to Babylon. And here's what God tells the people. And I want you to hear these words. He says, This is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says to those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Did you hear that? I carried you. That's what Jesus, that's what God says to the people of Israel who are now in slavery. They are, they are in slavery in every way as property of their owners. They have no rights whatsoever. They can be beaten, raped, abused. They can be treated in any way that their owners decide to treat them. And, and so they are. If they have a nice, good owner, well, they have a halfway decent life. No freedom to make choices for themselves. No, no, no ability to be able to, to rise socially. They're still slaves. But at least they're not abused in various ways. So it is to these people that these words come. And the first thing we hear is, I carried you. Through the most difficult time, being literally in shackles and feet and hands tied together and marched a th almost a thousand miles to Babylon, God carried them. I can't help it, but, but think of the old poem, uh, I think it was written in the 80s. And the poem is called The Footsteps. And in that poem, it, it talks about a man who's looking at his life as footprints in the sand. And it starts out where he sees the footprints in the sand and there's one set of footprints, his own. And then it makes comes to a point in his life where he makes a commitment to Jesus Christ and he becomes a Christian and he has faith in God. And suddenly, instead of having one set of footprints, there's two sets of footprints. And, and he goes through this, he goes through, he continues to see his life in this footprints of the sand until he comes to this tragic, difficult time in his life. And suddenly there's one set of footprints again. And he looks at God and he says, God, where were you when I needed you the most? The two sets of footprints turned into one set of footprints and you left me. And God spoke to him and he said, those are not your footprints. Those are my footprints. I was carrying you. And here we see once again, the beauty of the good news of Jesus Christ, of the gospels that we have, of the, of, the, of the bounty of God. When we go through the very toughest of times, he'll carry us through. You'll see one set of footprints because God is carrying us. This is what the Lord God Almighty says. I carried you into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. 
So when we go through the very toughest of times, when we find ourselves in shackles, when we find ourselves forced to do things we do not want to do, things that don't make any sense, things that, that are silly, but okay, we have to wear that. What do we do? Do we, do we just complain and fight about it? Or <laughs> do we do what the, what the Bible tells us to do? And here's what the Bible tells us to do. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Why? Find wives to your sons. Give daughters to them in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in numbers, but do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city for which you are carried into an exile. In other words, be normal. Just be normal. That is a normal life where we want to be able to have weddings. And we, have, we have celebrations. We increase in number. We, we pray for the bounty of all those who we reside with even though we may not agree with them philosophically, even though we may not agree with them religiously, we still pray for, this, for, for the prosperity of all because it's very clear in here. Why do we do this? Pray, we also seek peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers you Two will prosper. We need to drop anything that keeps us from experiencing peace nationally, locally, and worldwide. We have to pray for prosperity for all. Not just our own race, but all races. Not just our own religion, but all religions. Not just our own political party, but all political parties. We need to pray for the prosperity of this nation, and not only this nation, but the world. Because as the world prospers, you prosper. That's what we're being told here. God carries us. When we go through these tough times, the very toughest of times, he carries us through. We don't find ourselves uh, we don't, doing it ourselves. It's one set of footprints only because God's carrying us. And when we, when we get through that toughest of times, and we will get through these tough times we find ourselves in today, it is time to then go back to normal. Find, how did he say it? He, he, he basically talks about family. Uh, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons. Give your daughters in marriage. Etc. Etc. Plant gardens, and that's what he tells us to do. But then at the same time, listen to what he says next. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. <laughs> they are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them. So do not believe their lies. Do not believe their manipulations. Do not believe everything you're being told by. Now we could probably think of some things and some people who've told us things that do not actually are not true. We've been told originally that masks do not help. Then the same person who told us that came back and said, well, actually they do, but the reason we told you that in other words, the reason we lied to you is because uh, all of our health professionals need them. We we're afraid they're going to run out. But yet we all know where the health professionals get their, their supplies. They don't get it at CVS and Walmart. They, they get it from hospital supply stores. So even in confessing that he was not telling the whole truth, I don't think he's really telling the whole truth. prophesiers. Two million people are going to die. How do we know this? We have algorithms. 
What kind of, where the algorithm comes from? What is the algorithm? Tell us what it is. Oh, no, we're not allowed to share that with you. Why not? I, uh, it's, that, that algorithm is owned by uh, a private company. Interesting. So the facts come out that there isn't going to be too many people die of COVID in the U.S. As of today, there's just under 125,000. And tomorrow, the headlines, mark my words, tomorrow, the headlines across all your mainline media, it's going to be 125,000 people have died of COVID. But they're not going to tell you that at least half of those, and maybe more, are, are, are there because of CDC informing everyone, all of the hospitals, that they're, that they're allowed to list COVID as the primary cause of death, even if it isn't. And they're doing that so that the hospitals can receive more financial remuneration because they do need it. And so we don't know what the real number is. And, and someday we might know, but we know for a fact, everyone's common knowledge, that is an inflated number. But here's the good news. That for the, for the past nine weeks straight, the death rate has continued to drop. And... And our diviners and our prophets of doom are not going to tell you that. They're going to tell you more people are getting it. Well, they don't have any symptoms, but more people are getting it. And yet the death rate continues to drop. Ladies and gentlemen, that is good news. The good news is that God has carried us through this thing. The good news is that we're through this thing. The good news is that it's time for us to experience and to practice the, the, the reality of God and get back to normal. So do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. So what does the Lord declare? What does the Lord have to say for us? This is what he has to say. This is what the Lord says. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will come to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. We are about to find freedom. We find our freedom in the good news of Jesus Christ, who sets the captives free. God is about to carry us out of our captivity. And the captivity that we find ourselves in is here. Slave mentality is a slave to fear. Oh my goodness. I, 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 might get, I might get something and die. Ladies and gentlemen, hear this. It's not if you're going to die. It's simply when you're going to die. And how we're going to die, we do not know. But this is where we find our freedom. In the grace and the love and the blood of Jesus Christ, death has lost its sting. It cannot conquer you. You have conquered death by the blood of Jesus Christ who died on the cross, forgiving us of our sins and giving us eternal life. For we are not simply human beings going through this life trudging through life. Oh no, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. And as such, we realize that what we go through are tests and trials and that our life really begins when we are born again into the reality of a spiritual awakening, that we are freed from the captivity of the fear of death and have eternal life through Jesus Christ.
And we live forever in heaven with our Lord and Savior. That's the message today. When we go through these toughest times, God is there. God is carrying us through. He's embracing us. He's holding us. That as we go through this life and as we find ourselves captive, there will be people who want to keep us in chains, who want to keep us in fear, who want to keep us in bondage, who want to control us, who want to manipulate us, who want us to do all kinds of things. But here is the here is the reality. This, this virus is turned from a tiger, which it was at its peak, <laughs> into a wildcat. The death rate, even though cases are climbing, the death rate continues to decline. Nine weeks in a row, the death rate has continued to decline. Ladies and gentlemen, God is carrying us through this time. It is time for us to be able to worship together. It is time for us to be able to declare the glory and the goodness of God. This is an opportunity for us to realize that with God, we can do all things. Here is his promise to us today. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. Then, and then as now, we will call on him. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. This is our message today. God's carrying us through those tough times. God has defeated this virus. We are able to hold on to the reality of God's goodness. And we can prosper through the grace of Jesus forever. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are here in a place of coming to you in prayer. That you have promised us that you will carry us through. That you have promised us that we will prosper. That as we continue to start living a normal life uh, with marriage and having children and experience and planting our crops and harvesting, and even though we are in bondage, we too will prosper. And so, oh Lord, we pray for our enemies. We pray for those who don't have the same understanding and reality that we have. We pray, oh God, for our leaders. We pray that we will be led in a way that produces greater freedom and responsibility and love and joy. So be with us, O oh Lord. Guide us. <laughs> and, and may we feel your presence in all things and in all ways. We love you, Lord. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. In your lying down and your rising up and your labor and your leisure and your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for joining us for worship. Share this message, post it on your, on your Facebook page, let people know that God is alive, that there is a positive message here, that we don't have to be bound by fear, but we can live in the confidence that God is going to see us through. God is with you, God loves you, and so do I. Have a great day, and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye.